Hey, what's up folks? Cody from Southeast Softwash. Today is November the 3rd. We're getting into the November Thanksgiving season. We're gonna be doing some Black Friday pre-sales basically the whole month of November. I meant to do a video the first part of this week, but I was a little bit under the weather, so I hadn't really felt good up till today. But check the website. We're gonna be running some sales on training and equipment throughout the month of November going into uh, the holiday sales. This video here today, we're talking about the 10 gallon a minute, 24 volt uh, softwash pump that we've been very excited about. There, there are not very many of them. We've got another supply of them. I think we've got about 20 or so over there. They just came in uh, today, actually. So we've got a few. If you guys wanna grab one, hop on the website, links down in the description. This is a very impressive pump. It's got 10 gallons a minute at 100 PSI, lots of distance out of these. And the reason I like these is for the guys that either really need it or maybe they just think they need that extra performance, that extra horsepower, this gets you into that realm of, it says it right here, uh, somewhere on the thing it says rivals gas, gas powered soft wash systems. It gets you most of that performance uh, at a much cheaper and much easier to run price than like a gas soft wash system would be. So let's run through the things that you're gonna need to set this up. A lot of these components would be the same stuff you would need on a gas powered system as far as the plumbing, but there are some specific things that you'll need different than a 12 volt, because this is five gallons a minute, all right? This is 10 gallons a minute. So we've got to have a few specific things to be able to make this work. Now, if you've got one of our systems, whether it's a Lumamax, an older dual blend skid, one of our trailers, we got several trailers in here, you're not gonna to have to change a whole lot, but you're gonna to have to change a few things. So let's go through them really quick. If we look right here uh, at this standard half inch manifold, this is what you need for a 12 volt, five gallon a minute setup, okay? So we've got half inch plumbing on the suction side, half inch bleach line, half inch water line, quarter inch on the surfactant. Everything here is plumbed on a half inch and then it runs out to the hose reel, half inch all the way out. So works beautifully like that, uh, it's a very good setup. When we go up to that 10 gallons a minute flow, we're obviously gonna have to change some things around. This is something you'll need. Now it doesn't have to be this. These are our custom made blocks. They're not available right now. We've got them, but they're just for our use. We will be. Maybe after the first of the year, these will be available for sale, just this aluminum drilled and milled out block, which gets you all these fittings down here. Now you can get this stuff in elbows and tees uh, from Banjo. You can get it from a bunch of websites online. So don't freak out just because I'm not gonna sell you that right now. I don't have enough to sell you guys, but you can get the same components just made out of the poly, which would be your cross piece and then your two elbows here and then a line coming out. So probably a three quarter elbow at the bottom. But basically what we've done here, the most ideal way to do it, the middle one is gonna be our surfactant, okay? That doesn't need to change from a half inch or quarter inch on the hose because that's just an additive. That's not the bulk of our flow. So we can leave that one alone. It's a half inch still. So that one will be just like this. These other two, water and bleach, and also the outgoing port here, they've got all gotta be beefed up to three quarter inch plumbing. So you'll have a three quarter inch, uh, manifold leg uh, check valve. Obviously you guys can see that three quarter instead of half inch. You'll have to get one inch metering valves and then all these other barbs and stuff will be three quarter inch. So the nipples from here to here, uh, the check valves, the metering valves. Okay, why are they not three quarters? Why are we going to one inch on the metering valve? Because a metering valve has a lot of flow restriction in it due to the nature of the way the inside of that thing works. So we're gonna go up to one inch, which means we'll have good flow for the three quarters setup. So you'll need a one inch metering valve here, a one inch metering valve here. This one can stay half inch. You can use a GF right here, uh, Pentair, whatever you guys wanna use. This one doesn't need to change. Just these two, they gotta be three quarter inch on all the plumbing and one inch on the metering valve. So when I say all the plumbing, I mean everything from the bulkhead there's a three quarter inch bulkhead, which is much bigger than the half inch we've got there. So that would be replaced. The one going into the bleach tank, we use a drop stick because we don't want to poke any holes in the bottom of this bleach tank, that way it can't leak. So we've got a, a PVC stick that goes down on the inside. All of that would need to be three quarters as well. Three quarter bulkhead, three quarter hose, and a three quarter inch PVC line going down to the bottom. So if you get all your plumbing on three quarters all the way to here, and your metering valves are one inch, that's your supply side is gonna be pretty much set up perfectly. All right, so let's talk about the discharge side. This will also need to be three quarters, and the pumps come that way. 
we can look right here at the way they're made. So we've been messing with this one. I drilled that hole out. This was uh, actually the original pump we took to the huge convention. Make it fit on our demo skid, we cut us a little access hole there. So that's a three quarters, that's the suction side of the pump. And then this would be, oh, actually that's opposite. That would be, I had it upside down. That was the discharge side. So that's a three quarter T fitting right there. That's a three quarter T fitting. And that's your suction, that's your discharge. You can pivot them, you know, you can move them around a little bit and orient them how you want to. But all that'll need to be three quarters as well, going up to the hose reel. Now, if you're using pretty much what everybody's using, like a Titan, uh, one of the real deals, any of the, the common soft washing reels, the innards here are gonna be half inch. It'll still work because you're only restricting it just a little bit for a very short section in the inside of that pipe. So I wouldn't go out and replace the hose reel. It's not gonna affect the performance enough to kill it. We ran the ones we've been fooling with on a half inch soft wash hose and they've honestly ran fine. It hasn't overheated the pump, hasn't caused any back pressure issues, but I think just doing math, it would be probably uh, the ideal scenario to have five eighths on the discharge hose. So leave the hose reel. It's not gonna, if you look at uh, flow restriction charts and um, there, the words escaping my mind, but there's, there's like a chart you can look up and, and see like different diameters and it's really not that short of a span. It's not gonna affect a whole lot. So don't worry about changing your hose reel out. But if you wanna beef that hose up right there to a five eighths, that's gonna get you some better flow coming through the pump it's gonna not put a lot of back pressure on the pump. Even though we've had good luck so far with a half inch setup, when we start rolling these things out on our equipment, we're probably gonna put a 5 8 hose on there just so it's got ideal suction and ideal outgoing flow, okay? Hope that makes sense so far. So if you wanna grab one of these, hop over to the website. Let's go in here and look inside the box. There's a couple things you'll need to do on the electrical side. Obviously it's 24 volts, so a little different. This is our standard setup. So we've got a 12 volt pump on this side, 12 volt pump on that side. Each has their own independent uh, battery bank, wiring, everything is independent. That way we know that there's not a, if something goes wrong over here, that side's still operational and it helps with troubleshooting as well. So what you'll need to do, there's a couple ways you can do this and make it work. If you're running a dual setup like this, drop another battery right here in this pocket, run these together so you got 24 volts. And then what you could do, if you wanted to be fancy, is go ahead and drop a, a fourth battery right here and run these together in a 12 volt setup. So now you've got a larger 12 volt bank on one side and a 24 volt bank on this side. And it's all in how you set it up. I can never remember which one is, is 24, series or series, parallel? Series. series, okay. So if this was gonna be our 24 volt side, we'd run those in series, that gets us to 24 volts. And then this side, we could run this in parallel and it's still gonna be 12 volts, but you'd have double the runtime. I would just do that because I don't like tying my system together at any point. That way they're completely segregated. If I have an issue, my other side's still good to go and nothing's intertwined. Uh, that's the way we would do it here. You could link them together several different ways, but pulling juice off of two, one battery or one battery set up with two pumps, you'd probably deplete your battery pretty quickly. So you'll need to do that. You'll need to drop some batteries. Not a big deal. At least one battery to get you to 24 volts. So you got to have two. So if you got one, add one. The other thing is you'll have to have a battery charger that can handle that. So NOCO, we don't carry them. We're a NOCO dealer, but the only ones we stock is this one and the one for the mini skid, which is a single bank. Uh, but you can get these online. A NOCO, let's see, a, a Gen 3, a three bank would handle that. So you'd have one charging bank going over here and then two going over here to that one. There's, like I said, four or five different ways you could set up the electrical, but that's the gist of it. All of this other stuff, no need to change yet. The switches and all that stuff will be the same. So hope that answers some questions you guys have had about the 24, 24 volt setup. Really slick, we really like them. There's a couple things that we're working with Northern to change, and I'll just be upfront with you guys. This is, you know, the first of its kind of these. There's a couple other companies, Delavan, Actually, come over here. We've got a Dell van. There's several companies that are uh, trying to make these now. So there's there's that one. Dell van's down here. So the Dell van. I wasn't that impressed with the Dell van because it's a 12 volt. Now they list a 24 volt version on their site, but I've not been able to get one yet. So the only one I could buy is a 12, but it's the same concept. 
a Siamese, two pumps together. The thing I like about the Delavan is this is a much stronger port design for incoming plumbing. It, it grabs better. It's got more engagement here. So we like that. The Northern, it's okay, but this is gonna give you a little trouble. See, this is a little bit flimsy and we're working with the engineering team at Northern to see if we can address this. The way we did it to fix the problem because of that, just that play right there, we set it up how we wanted it. We got everything like we, like we needed it. And then we just put a drop of super glue here and on the, the back side of that tab. That way it didn't vibrate. Cause what was happening was it was so just kind of barely engaging that it was vibrating itself loose and it was causing a little drip. So we just put it there, boop, drop a super glue. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. They're working on that. They'll get all that stuff dialed in. But I think the pumps themselves are pretty strong. The cool thing is if these go out, when, when these go out, all you gotta replace is this top piece. If you get a leak, it's got the leak detection. It's gonna pick up that leak, detect it, shut it off. The red light will come on here telling you, hey, you gotta replace this cartridge. These are like $40. You can get them from Northern Tool. We don't have them. Northern Tool, go there, replace this. In about five minutes, you're back up and running for 40 bucks. So if you're getting that extra performance, that 24 volt super sprayer performance, and then you're only got to replace these a few times a year at 40, 50 bucks a pop, super affordable, super easy to keep running. And you know, these manufacturers are gonna get this stuff dialed in over the next season, I guess, and they make them better. They're really good right now. We're super stoked about them, but as everything you, you tweak, you make things better as you go. Hope that, sorry, I hope that answers some questions you guys have had. Check out the website for the sales that we'll have uh, through the rest of this week, some training sales and some equipment stuff going into next week, some parts and supplies stuff. So we'll check in with you guys later. We got a bunch of stuff in here that's be headed out Friday. Hope y'all have a great week. See ya.